Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, before we get too far in, if you wouldn't mind hitting the like button, that really helps out a lot. Uh, I also love it when you leave comments, so please feel free to leave a comment if you have something to say. Uh, I'm going to do a kind of pendant I've done some similar ones to in the past. Uh, it's just going to have a single small stone, and it's going to have some 10 gauge wire that's just tapered along its length. So. We're going to have to do a bit of filing or uh, some other trick to get that to taper nicely. Uh, so we'll work on doing that. Uh, before we get too far in though, I wanted to um, thank my uh, patrons over on Patreon. And I have a new uh, patron, uh, Bill J. Thank you for signing up. I really appreciate your support. And I look forward to finding out the kind of things you like to make over there. So. Uh, Thanks to all the rest of my patrons, too. You guys are a great group, and I love uh, working with you. So the other group I wanted to thank is my YouTube subscribers. Uh, we just passed uh, 8,100, and that's awesome and amazing, and I really can't believe we're getting that many people following me. Uh, thank you for all of the support, both uh, financially, like when you buy me coffees and things. That really helps out with supplies, incidentally. And uh, just for being such a nice group of people. Uh, when I first started this, I thought I was going to run into a lot of trolls, but I've had very few trolls. Mostly very nice people, and some people just super nice. So thank you for that. I really like uh, interacting with you, and I look forward to hearing your comments and suggestions. So with all that being said, uh, let's get started. Let's see what I drew up here. This is my design idea book, or one variation of them. Uh, I started using these when I started the channel, and I started to have a much better outcome when I was making something, because I had a better plan, and I could sometimes even use this as a template. Uh, one of the things I value about these particular ones are they have the little dot matrix in the background that gives me sort of a graph paper kind of deal, and that helps me to keep things proportionate, because I'm not very good at keeping things proportionate or symmetrical. <laughs> so, uh, this is going to be just basically almost like a, a mouth harp looking kind of shape or, uh, or a teardrop that kind of tapers along the length of the wire. Uh, I picked out this little green dyed agate. I think it's sort of pretty and bright and it'll stand out nicely against that. And uh, for the wire I'm going to be using uh, 10 gauge square, or <laughs> sorry, 10 gauge round. And what we'll do is we'll create a a shape that goes around it like that, but before we do that we're going to have to taper it so it kind of gradually gets narrower and narrower. I'll show you some tricks to do that. Let's see, uh, for the bezel uh, I'm going to be using 3 16 inch fine silver bezel and uh, I'm going to use 26 gauge for this one which is uh, a little bit on the thicker side which I like. Uh, for the bottom of the bezel I'll probably just use 26 gauge sheet it's not going to be a structurally important part of the piece. Um, but yeah, that's about it. So I think it'll be a pretty easy project. We'll see. But we'll start by making this bezel, I think. So let's do that first. If you haven't visited my channel before, I use uh, hard silver sheet solder, wherever I put it. There it is. Hard silver sheet solder. And I use a spray on flux called Mighty Flux. These are just some of the questions people ask me frequently. I use 3 16 inch fine silver bezel because it's tall enough for most stones. Um, and if I don't want it to be that tall, I can just cut it shorter or find it shorter. Um, rather than keeping five different kinds of bezel around, it's just kind of easy. You can get different thicknesses too, though. I do um, keep some quarter inch on hand usually because there are occasions where you find a super thick stone that you want to set. It's nice to have something just a little bit taller around. I used to buy the eighth inch as well, but I just usually get the one kind anymore. And measure just a little bit uh, beyond where they cross over, so I have a little room to file. Oops, come back here. Set that in that guy so I don't lose him. And we'll cut this off right where I made the scratch.
torch is a smith, uh, a silversmith torch, which is a Southern Air torch, and it's been a great torch for me for years. I use the number one tip on it, for most things anyway. Piece of solder right on the solder joint, and keep that thing up till it flows. We'll spend a minute uh, shaping this back into a circle and we'll see how we are on size. We got the size about right. So let's cut ourselves a little piece of 26 to make the bottom out of. Just grab this corner right here. in here. I'm just going to make sure they're touching the sides and the bottom. They don't have to lean or anything. They just have to be touching both. But I am going to heat right around the base here. Because the sheet on the bottom is harder to get hot than the bezel itself. Because the bezel is sitting upright exposed to the flame more. So oftentimes beginners will melt their bezels because they're failing to get that bottom sheet hot enough before they overheat the top part. If you have ever had problems with melting bezels and you're a beginner that's probably what's going on you just need to focus on getting the sheet uh, hot a little bit more than the top part because this will get hot pretty easily if that makes sense for this one I'm not going to solder anything to the sheet on the side so I'm just going to trim it off Now I'm just going to file this flush. So this is going to go right here. And this is a 10 gauge wire. I actually measured a piece of wire that I kind of bent around there and it came out to be about 70 millimeters. And I think I might just bend this and wrap it around it just to see and kind of estimate that way as well and see how close I was. Let me use my little bail making pliers here to get a loop on the end. So since this is going to have to curve around to the other side, I'm going to add about Figuring a circle is, uh, circumference is roughly three times its diameter, so if I look at that, two, three, that may even be a little short. Although, honestly, this is going to be, let's do it just a little bit longer just to be safe. Okay. I'm not actually going to cut that piece out, I'm going to cut from one end so I don't waste the rest of this. But I can at least measure that and see how close I was to when I guessed. Uh, 70-ish. Well, 
Well, what I just marked is a little bit. Come on. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 75 ish. I ended up with. But I think that should be about the right amount. So let me file one of these ends flat. There's a number of ways that we could get this to taper. Um, and one way is you could take it and you could gradually forge it out so that this got smaller and smaller. It's hard to get it very consistent unless you've got a lot of practice with that. So I, I don't find that to be the best way, usually. Um, you could just manually file it you know, while you're spinning it, kind of. And you'll eventually get it tapered down. Again, it might be hard to get it you know, super consistent. But uh, one way that was suggested to me once a while back was uh, chuck it right into a drill and then uh, put a stationary piece of sandpaper and sand it that way. Um, which I think I'll show you in a minute here. And I also occasionally, when I'm really in a hurry, is I'll use my belt sander out in, out in my uh, wood workshop area. Um, and that takes off material pretty fast. You could probably do that in conjunction with the drill and get a pretty even um, taper. So but let's go over uh, this area over here and I'll chuck this into my drill and we can see if we can taper it down. I probably should kind of side where I really want the taper to start. I mean technically let's find the center here. That's about the center. So probably from about here down. Let's see how far that is away from that. It's about 10 millimeters. We'll do that. We'll start the taper about here. We'll leave this pretty much round like that and then just gradually taper this down. Okay, in spite of my messy area here, you should be able to see I've got a piece of wood with a piece of sandpaper kind of hooked into this little vise. And I should be able to kind of Okay, now I'm going to use a, a little bit of fine sandpaper to kind of smooth this out a bit. So you got yourself a big silver toothpick now. <laughs> Okay, so I think we can probably work with that. Let's go uh, see if we can shape that. So let's find the center again. That's about the center. So let's see if we can't... Uh, in order to not uh, put any dings in this, since I want it to stay pretty I'm going to start bending it like this, maybe. Around something. You can use a uh, jump ring mandrel or the tip of your ring mandrel, I suppose. I'm just going to kind of manually shape it a little bit.
mostly I want that to be you know soldered at the very bottom um, I do I would like to get this a little rounder though so let's see if I can do that Just kind of making some fine tuning adjustments to getting the shape where I like it consistent and stuff. And I don't know that there's any secret tricks to this. I just want the, the curve to be relatively the same at the bottom here where it's soldered to the bezel. This stuff I can manipulate afterwards. So let's, uh, I think that's pretty close. Make sure he's sitting flat though. So I think let's just pop him in there. Well, we'll see. It looks pretty consistent to me. It's always fun to try to get things exactly the same on both sides. <laughs> Not always the easiest. Let's see how this goes. So you may notice that I use uh, pick soldering a lot in my videos. Uh, it's where you use your pick to actually pick up a little bit of solder and place it where you want it to go. If you're interested in learning how to do that, I have a good video about it, and I'll put a link right there for you. It's a it's a very useful skill when it comes to getting good at this. Quite a bit more mass in this band than there is this bezel, so most of the heat's going to go to the to the band. It's going to take a little bit more time to get that up to temperature. You got a pretty good connection there. I'm going to go ahead and trim this one down to the same length because I didn't have it quite centered. But I gave myself a little room to fudge, I hope. So really I need to bring these around. So let's see if we... Uh, I could do it with these guys. Should we try that? Notice I'm just going sideways right now, but after I'm done, I'm going to turn them a little bit backwards. I try not to squeeze too hard because I don't want to put big dings in the metal here. That's looking pretty nice. I like the, the smoothness of that curve so far.
think I might uh, file these a little better so they line up nicely with that edge. So I'm going to bend it back just a little bit like that on both. That should allow me to taper that down a little bit. I'm going to use the Dremel though to do it quickly, so I'll be right back. Okay, go ahead and solder it on either side there. Probably don't need that big a piece of solder for those. One of the things I like about tapering wire is it, make it, it makes it look, uh, have a more natural flow to it. And I think it just brings out some, um, a look in your jewelry that isn't just so you took some wire that, and kept it exactly the same shape and just soldered it together, if that, if that makes any sense. It gives it some flowy, artistic feel to it. More organic -y. Doesn't even have to be very extreme, just a subtle change in the thickness of the wire that can sometimes make a big difference. So, the last bit before I pickle this is I'm just going to turn these. Try to do it pretty consistently. Okay, so now it's got this uh, kind of pathway for the chain to go through. We call that the bail if, you have, if you're new to this. So I'm going to go ahead and pickle that, and then I'll come back and we'll polish it and set the stone. So I got this all polished up and ready to set the stone. And I've positioned the stone so that it's just about where the curve of the stone is slightly underneath where the top of the bezel is. And I do this a little differently than a lot of people, but uh, most people use a bezel pusher, which is a little tool to push the bezel up against the stone, and then a burnishing tool. I use just the flat side of the needle nose or the chain nose pliers here. While I'm pushing down pretty hard here, I'm just going to push that straight in. Kind of roll it around. So that's pretty well pushed up against there. I'm going to take this rounded outer part and I'm going to rub that top edge where the stone and the top of the bezel meet with quite a bit of force. This is that burnishing stage that you would, many people use a burnishing tool for. <clears throat> Once I'm done on camera here, I will uh, take a Dremel with a fine polishing bit and clean up the top of the bezel a little bit. Then 
we'll just put it on a chain. See if we see if we achieved what we were shooting for. So that's kind of what I was hoping for. And I got it pretty much proportional to what I was thinking. So all right, I will uh, hope you enjoyed that, and I think it's a simple design, but I think it's relatively um, nice looking. It's a good, good, easy project. So uh, I'll take some better pictures and put them at the end. Okay, well that was the tapered teardrop with the little dyed agate in it. I hope you enjoyed that one. If you did, make sure not to forget to hit the like button before you leave. That helps out a lot. and. Um, before you leave, you also might want to check out my playlist page. I have uh, things organized, now that I've got so much content here, uh, into playlists that you might find help you to sort through it all. I'm putting out three videos per week, one on Tuesday, one on Thursday, and one on Saturday generally. Um, so I'm making a lot of content, and I think there's a lot of valuable stuff here, uh, whether you're a beginner or someone uh, who's more advanced. Uh, either way, uh, I'd love to have you subscribe to the channel. Uh, don't forget to check out the video description as well. Uh, there's relevant links to me down there. There's a, a link to my website, the Buy Me a Coffee if you, need, if you want to give me a little bit of uh, cash to buy supplies. And finally, there's a link to my Patreon uh, if you wanted to find out more about that. So, Either way, uh, thanks for coming by. Take care. Happy silversmithing.